personal. It's personal between me and I'm going to do you some serious harm, you big stiff idiot. The Untouchable True School Sports Empire proudly presents something the boxing games are missing. Hey, what's going on? It's your boy BC. I came here to talk some boxing with the thousands of True School Sports subscribers. Now, this is my official post fight review for the heavyweight doubleheader featuring Johnny Rice as he takes on as he fought Guido Vinialo. He stopped him in the seventh round. That was the result of that fight. Very in intriguing fight. Very intriguing result. Very intriguing process. We'll get to that later on in the video. But let's start. Let, let's start the main event because. F.A. Jagba, man. F.A. Jagba, I think he showed a lot of growth in this fight with uh, Stephen Shaw. Uh, the result for the uh, for the fight, for those of you who don't know, is that F.A. Jagba, you know, a guy that's renowned for his punching power. He, he's renowned for being a big, strong, power-punching Nigerian fighter. This is a guy that came here tonight against a very, very good technical fighter in Stephen Shaw. And he beat him in a way we thought we could, that he couldn't beat him. You know, with F. L. Jagba, we know that God has blessed him with natural gifts, natural punching power, and he's always had that in his back pocket. But he's always lacked the fundamentals and the elementary, rudimentary boxing skills that it takes to 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 really cut it at the top level of heavyweight boxing. Uh, he got exposed in a major way when he fought uh, Frank Sanchez a couple years ago, and the the jury, I mean, the the verdict on Al Jabba was. He can't really beat guys that move. He can't really beat guys that you would classify as boxers or technical fighters or movers. And Stephen Shaw fit that description to a T. I mean, he was a technical technical fighter, beautiful footwork, light on his feet, uh, a combination puncher, uh, can sharpshoot, can counterpunch, can can punch in the move. You know, Stephen Shaw, truth be told, on paper to me, there were some things in his style that I th that I thought could be very nightmarish for F. Al Jagba, but what 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 did he show in this fight? I, I think he showed a lot of maturity because what I saw through the course of ten rounds from Al Jagba I, was a fighter that worked steadily behind the jab over and over and over again, um, stabbed him to the stomach, uh, came up top of the jab, and and he didn't abandon it. You know, he he didn't get discouraged in the early rounds when Stephen Shaw was moving around and sharp shooting him and pot shotting him and just taking some rounds off of him no he 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 stuck with that jab and it opened up a lot of doors for him and um what wound up happening was Stephen Shaw what we, what we what we learned about Stephen Shaw tonight is for that as good as he is he doesn't have another gear he doesn't have another gear he can get to he kind of is what he is he does what he does well and if you can't limit that you lose but if you can limit it can, if you can limit it offset what he does with with the movement and the sharp shooting and the pot shotting then you'll be able to have success and win the fight. And uh, being that Ajayi was also a naturally bigger guy, bigger frame, um, has the kind of punch power that'll make any fighter have to worry. Once he started boxing and and and, and really landing that jab and, and and landing a nice power jab on Stephen Shaw, you know, it really changed uh, the course of the fight as things went on. So. Um, I'm I'm very impressed with his maturation now. Do I think Agjagba can, can go and beat the top heavyweights? No, I don't. But could he beat maybe some lower top ten, lower top fifteen guys? You know, they're saying him and Daniel Dubois could be a fight that happens next. Yeah, I, I I would give him a chance in that fight because he's got the size, he has the punching power, um, and we know Daniel Dubois isn't exactly George Chavalo. You know, he you know he can be knocked out. We saw it in his last fight with Kevin Lorena. He's very vulnerable, and a guy like Agjagba hits him. You know, call it curtains. I think I think both those guys have their fair show, share of vulnerabilities, and it'd be a great fight to make. But um, let's talk about Stephen Shaw because, you know, I've had people on this channel. You know, shout out to Ghost. Love, 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 love my boy Ghost, who's a loyal viewer of the channel. But he's been the main guy at everybody banging the Stephen Shaw drum. And I gotta say, man, uh, there was a lot of talk about Stephen Shaw sparring with Wilder. Stephen Shaw had me on his side. Like, like he came out, he came out in his ring walk with Mob Deep. Havoc from Mob Deep, legendary rap group, came out to Survival of the Fittest, you know, one of the best rap songs ever. So I was on his side. I thought, you, you can't lose. If you come out to this song with Havoc from Mob Deep, you cannot lose the fight. And um, like I said, he got up to a great start, was 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 getting his position, had his lead foot positioning in order early on in the fight, pot shotting, uh, jabbing him up top, uh, countering with the right hand. You know, he was doing some great things early on, but then... The, when, when the when the rubber met the road and and Stephen Shaw was faced was faced with the realities of what it was going to take to win that fight, he just didn't do enough. I, I think he left it too close for comfort. And um, when you're a guy like him 
who has had fights fall out, who isn't who isn't a big name in the division, who has waited a long time for this opportunity. You can't leave stones unturned in the fight. And I just thought he left a lot of stones unturned in the fight. And it cost him greatly because he allowed F.A. Ajaba to get into a rhythm and um, box a very disciplined game plan. So he takes the first loss of his pro career. And, I, you know, I don't want to give him a life sentence because anybody can change. You know, one loss doesn't define you. But right now at this moment in time, Stephen Shaw kind of is what I thought he was. He was a guy that would be a fringe top 15 guy, a good fighter who's capable of competing on the, on the night with, uh, you know, some heavyweights in the top 15, but but not a guy that I think will be in the top 15, not a guy that I think will be threatening any of the world title challengers. So um, it's an unfortunate state of affairs. You know, I, I, I hope he can come back better and he can, you know, he's going to watch that fight back and he's going he's gonna to regret that he's going to regret that he didn't do more because I thought there was so much more he could have did. And it's it's just weird because going into the fight stylistically i thought he was all wrong for fa jagba but mentality wise maybe he just was lacking the extra bit of something mentally to get him over the hump and, I, and, and at that level that matters so uh you know uh disappointment from, from stephen shaw uh very impressed with uh the growth from fa jagba hopefully we, hopefully we get him and daniel dubois next because that'd be a hell of a fight so uh there's that fight and then um in the co-main event to me, this is the real story of the night. This is the real story of the night, ladies and gentlemen. And by the way, guys, I didn't say it earlier in the video, but shout out to Pops. He went live for me tonight. I've been very burnt out from covering boxing and going all over South Florida doing interviews. So um, thank you. Thank you to him for, for, for really stepping up tonight and, and holding on the fort for your boy BT and True School Sports. And thank you to everybody who tuned into the live with, with Pops. But um, Johnny Rice, man, Guido Vianello, what a fight this was. Um, it was an interesting fight because I kind of I, I did follow the betting lines going into the fight. Like uh, Vianello was a slight favorite in Vegas, and then the the betting lines kind of moved to Rice uh, as we got closer. And um, it was interesting because you know Johnny Rice has has we we we've seen this movie before with Johnny Rice. He he took the fight on short notice. Vianello is a guy that you know, albeit undefeated, he, I, I didn't look at him to be some sort of killer. I've seen him fight. He had a draw at Kingsley eBay a couple years ago. So to me, his his level has already been shown in boxing. And if you've seen the tape of him, you know that his footwork's kind of awkward. And he's like kind of one of these European fighters, very proper European style to where like he needs you in the right position to throw a punch. He's not just, he's not going to frame and he's not going to parry and probe and create openings. He kind of just needs you right there to, to, to throw a punch and, and do anything. And, he, you know, he didn't. Um, and that's what happened, you know. Early on in the fight, uh, first three, four rounds, you know, you could tell Johnny Rice was conserving his energy. Punch output was very low. He had his right hand in his back pocket, didn't really throw the right hand very much in the first three to four rounds. And I was telling everybody that. But uh, Vianello stepped, was stepping in a lot with, with, with some hooks and things like that, and he was missing a lot. Uh, Johnny Rice is very good at, like, pulling back and making guys fall just short. And um, he's doing his thing. You know, he, he did a great job, I think, to frustrate Vianello early and um as he was doing that right as he was frustrating him Vianello couldn't really get into rhythm and Johnny Rice got to pick up pick up on his rhythm and that ultimately ultimately led to the biggest moment in the fight which was um the sixth round where Johnny Rice lands a straight right hand from hell and I gotta say man Johnny Rice these last three fights he's had his, his straight right hand's becoming a, a, a one of the most dangerous ones in the heavyweight division it's vicious it's treacherous it's vicious and, and, it, and it gets your attention he hit Guido Vianello with a straight right hand, bang, right on the left eye. I believe it was the left eye, yeah, left eye or right eye, one of, one of his eyes. And a big cut opens up. So Johnny Rice is in business, and, and going into the seventh round, you know, that that cut becomes uncontrollable. But then controversy sprang, controversy came up to where now the the ringside position, position is saying it's from a cut, or it's from a head, that the, the, the cut was from a head clash. Benji Estevez is, is saying that he didn't see the cut. Or he didn't see the punch, so they were going to go to the scorecards. And if they would have went to the scorecards, more than likely, I'm, I'm pretty sure Guido Vianello would have got a decision because Johnny Rice got to a very slow start. But then uh, one of the top ranked employees, Carl Moretti, tells the uh, ringside position, hey, uh, go, go check this replay out on the ESPN replay. So credit to Benji Estevez. He actually showed great professionalism to get this right. He, he leaves the ring looks at the top rank at the espn replay and he sees the punch and what would have probably been a technical a technical decision win for guido vianalo now turns into a, a a stoppage victory for johnny rice so great great refereeing 
and great great um urgency to get things right from Benji Estevez, you know, um really professional job done by him and I and I tip my cap to him for trying to get things right when he could have very easily got this wrong as we've seen so many times in boxing. And I'm just so glad that they didn't screw Johnny Rice because that was a vicious straight right hand which deserved um the result we got, which was a stoppage, you know what I'm saying? So um funny enough, right? So Johnny Rice he beats the second undefeated fighter of his career, his uh, second undefeated fighter in his last three fights. And funny enough, I met Johnny Rice in late 2020, and that was just after he had lost to F.A. Jagba. But since I've met Johnny Rice, and that was back when he was uh, in training camp, he was in training camp, he was a sparring partner of Philip Hergovic uh, out here at Mundo Boxing Gym here in Miami. And since that training camp, Johnny Rice is 3-0 and with two knockouts. And, you know, one knockout against Michael Coffey, uh, now another one against Guido Vianello. And when you factor in those wins and then the guys he's also fought, like Dempsey McKean, Tony Yoka, um, F.A. Jagba, Stephen Shaw, Johnny Rice, quiet as kept, is, is putting together one of the better resumes in heavyweight boxing. You know, guys fought everybody. He's got wins to show for. He's a credible heavyweight, a durable heavyweight. Not everybody's stopping this guy when he does lose. So even when he loses, he's, he's still formidable in defeat. Oh, man, what a feel-good story. And, and, it, and it just goes to show you, man. He, he said it a long time ago, you know, um, when I interviewed him. His record is there to be judged, and it's getting better. And we're judging it. And, and, and we're loving what we're seeing from Johnny Rice. He, Johnny Rice, he's becoming a fan favorite. And it just goes to show you, man, that, that the good guys don't always lose in life. Sometimes the good guys win. And I'm, and I'm, and I'm so happy for him. And um, I, I would like to see him get a fight with a full training camp. But, uh, you know, he's, he's finding a way to win. And, and, and a true champion can adapt to any situation. So I'm not sure what's next for him. But I just want to see Johnny Rice be active in 2023. I want to see him in the ring again. You know, I don't like I, I don't like the fact that we had to wait 370 plus days to, for a Johnny Rice fight. I want to see him in the ring again. So top rank, PBC, whomever it may be that that has a fight out there for him, let let, let my boy be great. Let, let my boy show the world what he's got because um, he's likable, he's fun to watch. Um, and I would say I'm gonna say this, and this may be a I don't know what you guys think, but you guys let me know. I think when you look at what he did in the Michael, Michael Coffey the first fight, and then what he did in this fight with um, Guido Vianello. Johnny Rice has one of the top 10 straight right hands in this division right now. I, I personally think that. I'm not saying he's Wilder, and I'm not saying he's Philip Hergovich, or I'm not saying any of those things. But this guy's got a great straight right hand. Like, when he when he really lands that straight right hand and he turns it over, oh, bad bad things happen to his opponents. And I, and I, and I, and I want to encourage Johnny Rice because I'm, I'm going to send him this video. I want to encourage him, man. Keep working on that straight right hand in the gym. Keep keep working on, on setting it up, setting that right hand up. Make it repetitious in the gym because it is a great straight right hand. It's a fantastic straight right hand. The straight right hand that Johnny Rice has, you know, you just can't teach to fight it. He just got it. So God has blessed him with a straight right hand um, in a major way. So ha happy, happy for him to get the win. And um, it goes to show you, man, b boxing's not all about the undefeated record. Johnny Rice came into boxing late, got put in tough. I mean, tough. He's fought Tony Yoko. He's fought Dempsey McKean. F.A. Jogba, Stephen Shaw, uh, Michael Coffey twice, Guido Vianello. I mean, he's fought a lot of notable names in this heavyweight division. And uh, you're seeing that that experience, along with being in camp with guys like Philip Hergovich, is, is really serving him well um, as he develops in his career. So, you know, just God bless him and hopefully he can stay active. Um, but, yeah, that's my thoughts on the card. Um, let me know what you guys think about Jogba beating Stephen Shaw and uh, Johnny Rice beaten Vito Vianello and what do you guys want to see next for these guys uh, let me know in the comments down below make sure you guys take the time to subscribe and like I say in every single one of these videos you can love me or you can hate me but I'm just kidding Daniel so until next time take care guys thank you for watching another video on the untouchable true school sports empire for more great boxing content just like this video click right here and make sure you subscribe much love from sunny south florida